the hybrid solar eclipse and Bitcoin's horoscope. We have a way of looking at Bitcoin that you have never seen before. When will the dip be? And when will Bitcoin take off? In other words, we know when the start of the Bitcoin revolution begins. I'm your host, Bill Noble, joined by Toby the Tiger, our <laughs> resident astrology and tarot cards expert to take our GAN analysis to a whole new level. So if you need a roadmap in crypto and you want to see research that you can't get anywhere else, subscribe to this channel, turn on alerts so you know when we're going live. And of course, for Toby, hit the like button. Let's begin with the hybrid solar eclipse on April 20th. What's a hybrid solar eclipse? It's very rare, right? You see a ring of fire around the moon. It's a, it, it has a meaning where it sort of destroys the old, which is legacy, Ooh, banks, right? So if you ever heard of long Bitcoin short the banks, it's going to happen right around the hybrid solar eclipse. Now, there's two other events in astrology planetary movements, or just, you can call it an ancient way of looking at time. Saturn has moved into this uh, quadrant of space called Pisces. That happened in March. And Pluto has moved into Aquarius. Saturn and Pluto both have very strong implications for markets. So Toby, tell us about the mix between Saturn and Pisces and Pluto and Aquarius. Okay. Well, but first, before we go in there, I, I just want to touch on the solar eclipse that's coming up um, because it's in Aries, right? And I think that energy, so for me, all of this deals with energy. And an eclipse is a very short, powerful burst of energy. It's always, as you said, taking out the old, bringing in the new, and especially because this is in Aries. Aries is the baby of the astrological chart. So this is a very, very new, new thing that we're seeing happening right now. So that kind of kicks off this, this energy. And then when you, when you talk about um, Pluto and Saturn, um, Pluto is a planet of unusual and new things. It's a relatively new planet um, in astrological um, terms. And so it's not as effective on the personal as it is on broader social movements. And then um, Saturn is a little bit more of a personal, um, but Saturn represents restrictions, control, and, and those kind of things. So these two energies are coming up, which is really interesting following this burst of a new Aries solar eclipse, right? So the first one, um, let's talk about the restrictions, which is Saturn. And Saturn is in, oh, I forgot what you said. Pisces, <laughs> Pisces Saturn in Pisces. That's right, that's right. I'm, I'm getting them confused. So yeah, so with Saturn in, um, with Saturn in Pisces, Pisces is the end of the astrological cycle. So it is a death and rebirth planet or energy sign, right? So that would signal the combination of those and how we like to think about, about the planets as being like actors. And this, the, the sign that they're in represents the um, costume that they're wearing at that time. So you have this planet of restriction that's going into a death cycle right after you had this powerful baby explosion, right? So this this is going to be felt by a lot of people because it's a little bit closer to home. Saturn is an energy that we feel in our body. So there'll be uh, amongst the zeitgeist of people, they'll be feeling like oh, enough restrictions, enough restrictions. And there'll be this wanting to um, push out of that energy. And then following that, then we have the, the energy of Aquarius. And of course, we're entering the age of Aquarius, all of these social movements coming up. And, and Pluto in Aquarius maybe enhances Pluto, it. It does because Pluto is a bigger planet. It, it's way more around the social arenas. It's about large groups of humanity. They both deal with movement, you know, social movement. Um, there's a sense of Aquarius that deals a lot with about 
equality and fairness. And so all of these issues are going to all come to a head right at the same time. And that's really important, especially a planet like Pluto, because, because it's a newer planet astrologically. Um, and we're talking about a new type of currency that has the ability to change all of life as we know it. Right? Oh, so did you catch that? That's the crypto segue, folks. So check this out. You have a burst of energy on the solar eclipse. Then you have Saturn in Pisces, which is out with the old, right? You have a birth and then you have out with the old, right? You have crypto and then out with the old. And then you have Pluto in Aquarius. Pluto, kind of a destroyer planet, right? ushering in something new in Aquarius. So here's a question. What happens when you go bang on the eclipse and you have Saturn in Pisces and Pluto in Aquarius at the same time? How about this? A revolution. Believe it or not, the last time we saw these combinations, here's what we got. The French Revolution. Let them eat cake that led to the guillotine. Notice the French took over Black Rock headquarters in France recently. You get the American Constitution coming into play during these similar astrological cycles. So in technical analysis, things happen in threes. French Revolution, American Revolution, Crypto Revolution. It's coming. It's not only in the charts. It's not only in your heart, okay, but it's also in the stars. And just remember, if you think we're crazy, mm -hmm. William Gann made $50 million trading between 1929 and 1932 using these methods. Now, the next question you're going to ask is, okay, Bill, I got it. How do we, how do we position ourselves? Like what's the trade? Like we know it's going up at the time of this is recorded, right? Right before a couple days before the hybrid solar eclipse in April, but what's the roadmap? Well, I've given you some roadmap. I've given you sell in May and go away. And I've talked about something happening in the fall. But the question is, can we use astrology like the chart of Bitcoin? Like if you could get a fortune teller <laughs> to read the chart of Bitcoin, what would the chart tell you about trading tactics? So here's the first thing that we got in May when Toby helped me, you know, work with the Bitcoin chart. The first thing we got was powerful healing starting in May. Now you're like, well, Bill, that sounds positive. Well, here's what an app called The Pattern said about it. It said during this time, starting in May, right, any difficulty Bitcoin carries around embracing its intended career path or navigating its life in the way Bitcoin desires might rise to the surface. So difficulties regulation. Toby, anything on that? Well, we, we had the tarot card reading on, on regulation too. And, um, uh, all of these events that are coming up over the course of the year for Bitcoin are all dealing with the mid heaven and the mid heaven is a lot about career. It's about your purpose in life. It, it, it's about everything that you carry on, on the outside. And it's, it's really the pinnacle of that, of that evolution. So this is an extremely critical time for Bitcoin this year, where literally it's going to be able to prove itself as an adult. It's that maturation process and in the cycle of the chart. When you get to the midheaven, it, it, it's that point where you're not really a kid anymore. You're seen as a, a grown-up and, and taken into the adult world. So that's why these midheaven um, points and aspects that are all hitting at the same time are really important. And I think that's an energy that at least I've been feeling around people. I remember, you know, in the beginning, a lot of people thought crypto was a joke, you know, it, it's a little toy. And uh, I think it's, it's finally being taken seriously. It's a grown up in the room now. And not only that, but I mean, I personally believe that, as you were saying, the decrepit old systems are, are fading away. And, and it's time for the new kids on the block to take over and that's crypto okay the new kids on the block <laughs> now here's the catch we know that i know that toby knows that we're reaffirming the roadmap that's good 
But here's the catch. When we go out with the old, that's not going to be like, oh, we all just genuflect and it just happens. There's going to be a little bit of a bang with that. Chat GBT and GANWORK suggest a possible geopolitical event to the scale of 9-11, possibly coming in September. Okay, October, based on, you know, really legit solar and lunar cycle work, suggests that, you know, this year there could be a major stock market event in October. We've got two solar eclipses this year, and that's associated with 1929 and 1987. So how do you trade? How do you position yourself with, for out with the old and in with the new in October? And you'd be shocked to know that thanks to Toby and being able to pull up Bitcoin's chart and then putting it into this app called The Pattern, we find this cycle that starts on October 26th for Bitcoin. So it's almost like we're talking about a new cycle. And check this out. From October 26th, this cycle lasts until April 25th, 2024. Hmm. I think that's when the Bitcoin halving starts. So here are a couple of really good points about Bitcoin in October of this year. So when you have the legacy consternation, when you have the fear, okay, what happens now in October is significant for Bitcoin. But they, that would be you and me and Toby, <laughs> we could miss the moment if we're not paying attention. So whatever happens in October when it's out with the old, that's going to be a distraction. And you're undoubtedly sitting there saying, well, I'm not going to get distracted. And I'm going to tell you that I've seen crashes in October. Yes, you will. Yes, you will. You write down in your diary, right? You write down in your planner on October 26th. Don't get distracted. And here's why. Okay, here it is. The destiny of all humanity is aligned with their individual destiny and what Bitcoin came onto the planet to accomplish. The destiny of all humanity. Like, when have you heard stuff like that? You hear it from Elon Musk when he talks about going to Mars. Now you're hearing it from Bill and Toby talking about Bitcoin, right? This time period is giving Bitcoin a glimpse of what's to come and what's possible concerning its professional and home life in other words, who uses it and why? Like Fidelity, BlackRock, Morgan Stanley, every broker dealer in the world. How about central banks? So, Toby, any recap for us? Well, you were talking about positioning yourself and um, the, the peak of that was happening around the first of the year. So I would say, and, and you were saying don't get distracted, I would say that you want to maybe see movement, but not maybe until the end of, of the year with, with that energy, because it won't hit its peak until um, January. So any time in there would probably be a good time to, I would say, invest more and do more around all of these currencies, really, because it is evolving to that point. It'll hit that point, and then it's going to go down just a little bit. Okay, so we're not giving you investment advice, but we are giving you Santa advice. You want to know what you want for Christmas? You want to know what you want at the holiday time? You want Bitcoin. This is Bill Noble on behalf of Toby. We will see you next time.